All right, this will be weird, I promise. This will be really weird. While you are <clears throat> trusting the churches with your beloved children, the most important thing just under God omnipotent, these heretical, evil, wicked, demonic, Masonic, Luciferian, I often like to label them Mesa Luciferians because I think it just nails what is trying to be said. I'm scrolling through the pictures so that you can kind of see where we're going with this. They're everywhere. And they do. They use a non-linguistic language through symbols <clears throat> where it is an induction into their, their God. And oh my, is that a pig head <laughs> at summer camp? Well, yes. Yes, it is. So whether you're talking about Hollywood or the government, or you're talking about information coming through the television to you, whether you're talking about the churches, uh, you have an onslaught and an attack of people that seek your family's demise, that seek to pull you, if at all possible, pry you away from Jesus Christ. And, and their goal is to really keep you away from Jesus Christ, if at all possible. <clears throat> and so uh, I'm going to be releasing a video very shortly that my husband uh, did for me that I thought was just really, really good. And uh, we kind of have a little bit of dialogue going, going in it. And he gives a really excellent purview of what he sees happening in the culture and specifically with regard to the church leadership of what I'm calling and terming this plastic churchianity. It looks like the real thing, but it really is an illusion with copious amounts of just nauseating religion that looks like it could be the real thing. But when you really study it in depth, the practices, the ideas, the, the, the fact that another gospel is being preached, you kind of have to start to realize that everything around you is exactly, precisely what the Bible said, that Paul communicated that we are in a world that is not our home. And this, you know, curse of, and I'm very literal, 6,000 years, day six to 6,000 years, and then a thousand years apiece for a Shabbat rest with Christ. So 7,000 years, seven days, 7,000 years. And right now we are under this curse from Adam and Eve and that spiritual death that was put upon them. They did procure God's forgiveness, which was wonderful. But that situation has been put upon us, their children. And we live in a world full of people that do not have God on the inside. And you have tricksters that pretend with this plastic veneer to be Christians and even leaders. And in all reality, at the end of the day, when you look at the fruit of the doctrine and when you look at the fruit of the actions and behavior, you see that they do not sink consistently long term, year after year with the Son of God and how Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And in order for me, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to set you up for where my husband's going to go, which is so great because we're so uh, on target with each other's understanding of what is going on around us and as, you know, as strong Christians and ser serious students of the Bible and, and, and using that sword in a very intentional and aggressive manner to protect ourselves and our family in this cultural onslaught of insanity, which is really coming through your television and all of your devices. And it's quite disturbing when it comes through the church, the people that you think that you can trust. And so uh, this video will be a good precursor for me to release his video. And he talks about some things that I don't talk about. And so I want to share with you what is happening underneath your noses, especially for your uh, your older children in summer camp that go off thinking that grace to you is doing something good. And I am over here today at a site that I really like. 
called watchuntoprayer.org. And I will just grab the link now. And I'll put it in there so you can peruse it. There's probably months and months and months <clears throat> worth of reading of diverse topics that this uh, person has. And I don't know that I would necessarily agree with 100% of everything they think about everything. But I would say that it's very, very, very high up in the high 90s, which is pretty unusual. Uh, and I am pretty opinionated. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so let's go over this article because it's weirdness personified. And uh, it is a fairly long article. So I hate to break it to you, especially if you are in love with the teaching ministry of John MacArthur. I used to be at one point in that I was, even though I wasn't Calvinist, I'm born again and I'm pro born again. And I really abhor labels to a point, though I feel it necessary that sometimes because of the game of life where you have to use labels so that people understand what you're talking about, I have to do that, even though I don't like to. And I oftentimes will try to relabel something more appropriately. But anyhow. Uh, when you see weirdness coming from the Calvinists, I have questioned, is not what they're teaching another gospel? And if so, and I've had some great dialogue with a, a gentleman on my channel, and uh, if not in this video, then a, a forthcoming video, I want to share with you some sites that he gave me, some information that he gave me, and uh, the bantering back and forth uh, is quite lovely, actually. And, and brings out a lot of information, my, my uh, dear friend here on YouTube, Michael. Michael, you're such a, a blessing and a, a joy and a treasure trove of information. I really am blessed to read your comments and the information that you are able to provide. So I really appreciate that. And uh, underneath all of that, I, I have to recognize the thesis developing that Masons have snuck into the church at some point and that this Calvinist worldview is, in fact, what Paul would clearly delineate and say, that is another gospel that is not the gospel I gave you, which is a concern because there is a fair number of human beings on this planet who I am concerned for, that they may have a, a form of godliness, an illusion of godliness, but deny the power thereof, which our dear apostle, authorized apostle, who they drew blood on for us uh, as a martyr and a witness to the truth, dear pa Apostle Paul, and he will be resurrected and get many, many hugs and kisses from many Christians. I am certain of that. But he told us to not go by any other gospel, period, end of story. And he made it really clear. Do you want to see the scripture? And there are usurpers among us, particularly in leadership, dear friends, who do everything they can to normalize other gospels and then make it a sacred cow that you're not, clap your hand, you're not allowed to criticize, you're not allowed to question. And I would say that that is a very dangerous game. Um, I like this. It says, the world says we must respect all religions. The Bible says, thou shall have no other gods before me. And I really like that. But anyhow, Galatians 1.8 says, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the one that we've preached unto you, let him be accursed. It is that big of a deal. And that really syncs with what Christ said about that one path, that one door, that one way, that one lamb, that one name, and that only name under heaven by which men must be saved, which is Acts 4.12. So I was slow to catch on to that. I'll be honest with you. I was very slow to catch on to that. But I listened to MacArthur for some time because I was really craving and had a very, very big appetite for the word of God. And I was trying to locate ministries where I could derive truth. And some of his stuff, and this is the danger of John MacArthur and Grace to you, is that some of his stuff is very, very good. And all the best deceptions are, aren't they? That 90, they talk about the rat poison being 99% of legit food. And it's just that one, that one little percent that is something uh, 
what is the opposite of not efficacious, bad, poisonous, destructive. And that's really the best way to pull the wool over someone's eyes. But when you start having weirdness pop up, you're like, well, that just don't seem right. <laughs> like when Don MacArthur said, oh, yeah, you could, you could totally take the mark of the beast and get away with it. Not according to my Bible. So right there, it was like, you did not just say that. You did not just say that. And then I'm mad at him, too, because then Jim Jimmy DeYoung or whatever his name is was on Brandon House's program. And they were talking about and Jimmy said the same thing. And when Brandon didn't call him on the carpet with the scripture and he let him get away with it, I, I fully divorced the teaching. For, uh, for the most part, I think I did include one thing that he had said about something else in one of my videos. Uh, but I had been away from his ministry for quite some time because I felt violated. I felt like my trust in yet again, another male teacher, and I don't like female teachers. I really don't as far as like pastors and stuff like that, but I don't mind talking with people, just regular people in the body of Christ. Uh, there, 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 there was weirdness there in that, right? Like, why would you say that you would take the mark of the beast? And so I just completely stopped listening to both of those gentlemen and I'm Still a little torqued about that, but I'll get over it. It'll be okay. So herein is the weirdness that will be what is happening at John MacArthur's church. Just when you think your children are safe at church. <laughs> think again. And I love the writing of this watchunterprayer.org person. And there's hyphens in between each one of those words. And he pulls in the best quotes. This is part of a seven part series. And his articles are long and they are not, I'm sorry if this is hard on your eyes. I got to go fast though. Eee, sorry. Eee. <laughs> Pull the page down. Yes. Pigadocious. This is not even sanitary. Like why would you have this? It's insane. Right? Touch not the unclean thing. It was not meant to be part of druidic games. And there's a tie-in that my husband, that's so gross. There, there is a tie-in that my husband uh, caught on some of his research that I probably could not, what? Probably could not repeat to if my life depended on it and I had a gun to my head. But uh, he was explaining to me that there is, in fact, a connection with the druids and with masonry and the contents of this article. So introduction, the Mark of the Beast, John MacArthur's slave book, which is weird, based on heretical sources, Christian slavery, falling away from the faith, John MacArthur, Freemasonry. So that's going to be an important one to, to check out. Uh, John MacArthur's Druid Festival. Yeah, weird. Camp. How do you say that? Re, re, regen? Regen? Mind control? Nah. The Wicker Man, the Once and Future Clan, the British Druids. This is probably where my husband was getting some of his research in other places as well. We're big research hounds in my house. Evangelical Druids and the history of the Druids. So, and you'll know that those are pagans that did a lot of witchcraft. They were into earth worship, a whole lot of weirdness. And what's really nice is that he does his footnotes. And he has other people from Pilgrim Covenant Church, which I'm not super familiar with, but they have more pictures. And uh, there's very little criticism from churches that are even dipping their toe in the water because I don't, I don't know. Something has been put in the water and pastors no longer have much time, effort, or energy to critique thoughtfully the weirdness. <sighs> That's so weird of what is happening around them. And so you need to be on guard and we've had to leave. I was thinking about this the other day. I'll just tell you really quick. We've had to leave countless churches because the occult keeps coming in. <laughs> and uh, so we, we, we can't be having that. That's just too weird. Got to protect the family. So this article here. So we're, we're in the part seven because I just want to get to it. Uh, John MacArthur, mainstreaming paganism in the church. This is really important to understand. And it's not just MacArthur. No, no. The Mesa Luciferians are everywhere. So if you turn a TV on, I am pretty much to the point convinced now you are dealing with that, par that paradigm, yes, shift of change agents 
in that, what did I call it before? A, uh, a uh, oh, what is the word for that? A, I can't think of the word. The, I'm just going to say panoplia of, oh, the range of heresy. Thank you, Lord. The range of heresy. And so he is one of them, but he's not the only one. But we're talking about him today. And I love how they put in these little quotes. So helpful. So look at this. So if you don't know what Protocol 17 is from, it is from a particular group of people on this planet who do not have your best interests at heart. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, would be most unpleased if they were cognizant and aware of this period of time, which they may or may not be. I have no idea. Freedom of conscience has been declared everywhere so that now only years divide us from the moment of the complete wrecking <laughs> of that Christian religion. What? But in the meanwhile, in the meantime, while we are re-educating youth in the new traditional religions and afterwards in ours, we shall not overtly lay a finger on existing churches, but we shall fight against them by criticism calculated to produce schism. And schism means divisions, right? Let's go look that up really quick. Hello, boy. Yep, division, split, rift, breach, rupture, break, separation. Severance, estrangement, alienation, detachment, chasm, gulf, discord, disagreement, dissension. These are great words. Disunion. I do not know that word. I never heard that word before. I don't even know how to say it. Scission. Oh, I was never going to get that. <laughs> Scission. The action or state of cutting or being cut. Oh, okay. Oh, like an incision. Okay, okay, okay. I know what an incision is. A division or a split between people or parties, a schism. So I know schism. I've heard that word before. Okay. So, right. So they want to, and that's exactly what they're doing. So see, this is part of an orchestrated destruction where they separate themselves out in this crafting of a plastic churchianity that we've been talking about. That is exactly what they're doing. Okay, so to familiarize yourself with the uh, product here called, I'm going to have to be clever how I say this, the protocols of learned something, something, something is somewhere, and you can read that for yourself. If you're on a phone, uh, I'm sorry. The older people of a certain location on this planet, okay? And I just want to read to you really quick the table of contents. Preface or preface, introduction, who are the older people, so to speak? That starts with an E. The basic doctrine, economic wars, methods of conquest, materialism replaces religion, hmm. uh, despotism and modern progress, takeover technique, worldwide wars. Provisional government, re-education, preparing for power. The totalitarianism, to total, how do you say that word? Totalitarian state, control of the press, hello, distractions, yuppers. Assault on religion, mm hmm. Ruthless suppression, mm hmm. Brainwashing, abuse of authority, yep. Arrest of opponents, yep. Rule, rulers and people, financial program, loans and credits, and is there anything else? Oh, there's more. Power of gold, instilling obedience. Qualities of the ruler. Creepy. So, and let me see here. Go back to our article. The practice of advocacy produces men cold, cruel, 
persistent, unprincipled, who in all cases take up an impersonal, purely legal standpoint. And they have inveterate habit to refer to everything to its value for the defense and not the public welfare of its results. Oh, you mean like the government in America? They do not usually decline to undertake any defense whatsoever. They strive for an acquittal at all costs. Cavilling, I don't know that word, cavilling over every petty crux of just jurisprudence and thereby they demoralize justice. For this reason, we shall set this profession into narrow frames which will keep it inside the sphere of uh, executive public service. Advocates equally with judges will de be deprived of the right of communication with litigant and will receive businesses only from the court and will study it by notes and reports and documents defending their clients after they have been interrogated in court on facts that have appeared. They, receive an honor they will receive an honorarium without regard to the quality of their defense and they will render them mere reporters on law business in the interest of justice and the counterpoise to the proctor who will be the reporter in the interests of prosecution. This will shorten business before the courts and in this way we will establish a practice of honest, unprejudiced defense conducted not only from personal interest but by conviction. This will also, by the way, remove the present practice of corrupt bargain between avocation to agree only to let that side win, which pays most. Okay. We shall destroy the clergy. The what? We have long past taken to discredit the priesthood of the goim, which is what they love to call Gentiles. And it's, it's kind of a naughty, not nice word. And thereby to ruin... Their mission on earth, which in these days might still be a great hindrance to us. So day by day, its influence of the peoples of the world is falling lower. Freedom of conscience has been declared everywhere so that not only years divide us from the moment of the complete wrecking of the Christian religion. As to other religions, we shall still less... We, we shall still less difficulty in dealing with them, but it will be premature to speak of this now. And we shall act clericalism and clerics into such narrow frames as to make their influence move into retrogressive proportion to its former progress. Okay. Number three, when the time finally comes to destroy the papal court, the finger of an invisible hand will point the nations towards this court. Really? Hmm. When, however, the nations fling themselves upon it, we shall come forward in the guise of its defenders as if to save excessive bloodshed. By this diversion, diversion, let me repeat it a third time for emphasis, diversion, <coughs> see lie, we shall penetrate to its very bowels and be sure that we never come out again until we have gnawed through the entire strength of this place. My word, rabid energy to go after your goal of destroying things. Number four, the king of the what? It rhymes with shoes. It starts with a J. It's a people group, and there's only one of them on the entire planet. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever could it be? I worship one. I worship the one. The king of them will be the real pope of the universe. Yikers. The patriarch. Oh, my word. <laughs> Look at this. The patriarch of the international church. Wow. Right. The head of this fake plastic one world church that they're going to call the body of Christ, but it's all of these aberrant different religions in one. And then they put antichrist next to it. Uh, yes. And he'll hail from the tribe of Dan. My husband found some really interesting uh, information. I can't go into that now because the video would be way too long, but uh, there is much to be had known and research regarding the tribe of Dan and prophecies in the Bible, things and stuff and stuff and things happening but in the meantime 
Number five says we are. Can you re- imagine Michael Heiser being so stupid as to say the Bible is boring? Right. While we are re educating youth in the new traditional religions and afterwards in ours, meaning Kabbalah, we shall not overtly lay a finger on existing churches, but we shall fight against them by critici- criticism calculated to produce divide. And then, let me see. How many? Okay, so there's 10. I'm just skimming this. I want to skim this really quick. Hold on. Okay, number nine is important because this is happening. It's uh, you're you're a hair's breadth away from this happening with their coming temple on that temple. You know what? Just as nowadays our brethren are obliged at their own risk to denounce the cabal apostates of their own family or members who have been noticed by anything in opposition to the ball, cabal rather. So in our kingdom, it's funny they use the word kingdom. Over all the world, it will be obligatory for all subjects to observe the dirty the duty of service to the state in this direction. And that's interesting because uh, when you realize that there is a forthcoming obligatory Sabbath keeping operation where every single person on the planet according to the Sanhedrin in a particular nation, uh, well, it's going to be compulsory for you to keep not only not Noahide sublaws, but then also the Sabbath. And so other, other, other things I'm sure will be added on if you, uh, consider what Jesus said about these particular in- interesting people. So, if you're hearing this and going, why would John MacArthur do that? There's your reasoning for it. Each summer, MacArthur and Grace Community Church in California hosts a youth camp and church carnival. Regeneration Sun Camp draws 800 to 1,000 high school age youth from Grace Community Church and our MacArthur-related churches all over the U.S. The five-day camp is traditionally held at the end of July and culminates in a church carnival immediately following the Sunday evening service. For many years, Regeneration Summer Camp was held at Glorietta Camp in New Mexico, but the venue changed. Oh, interesting. Uh, In 2013 to Point Loma Nazareth University, Grace Community Church also sponsors a junior's writing camp, etc., Forest Home Conference Center in San Bernardito, California, was established in 1938 by Henrietta Mears to train promising young men such as who? Billy Graham and Bill Bright, the founders of Campus, the founder of Campus Crusade to be agents of change, agents of change, who would draw, (laughs) you cannot make this stuff up. Suddenly, it all just starts to make sense, right? This is what so many of my videos, video after video after video after video, dear ones, is bringing to the forefront of truth. Because that's all we care about on this channel. I just want to get down to the truth. Who would draw Christians into, quote, the global, ecumenical, and interfaith movement. Let's just drink that in for a moment. Let's, Let's go back. Let's go back because exactly what my videos, the last two to three weeks worth of videos has done is to detail and show you and demonstrate to you again and again how this very thing is being crafted by church leaders. You're not seeing me do the bunny ears right now, but I can assure you I'm bunny earing it with air quotes right now. And these people are your change agents and they have come in stealthily. And they're likable. Stop trusting people because they're likable. Stop that. If their doctrine does not comport with the Bible, then you got to cut them loose. 
And so Billy Graham and Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade, are agents of change who would draw Christians into the global ecumenical and interfaith movement. And that is exactly the message Billy Graham died with. And is Bill Bright still alive? I don't know. I want to say no, but I don't know for sure. So teachers at the Forest Home included Billy Graham, Irwin Orr, Harl, okay, a couple of their names, I don't really care, blah, 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 people I don't know, who founded the National Association of Evangelicals, right? They're going to put this facade of Christianity uh, on this identity of plastic Christianity. It's not real. Charles Fuller was the founder of, okay, oh, so he is one of them. Charles Fuller, founder of Fuller Seminary, is one of the change agents to bring Christians into the global ecumenical and interfaith movement, which you now see at what appears to be the final level of the 70 nations and the Sanhedrin that we have done videos on reporting all of that and sharing that with you. And they work closely, <laughs> closely with John MacArthur's father, Jack MacArthur, who directed Charles E. Fuller Evangelical Foundation, which funded Fuller Seminary in 47. Okay, are you starting to get the picture? Today, Fuller Theological Seminary is an ecumenical think tank. It's a think tank, which has fostered, nurtured, and promoted the apostasy of the Christian church globally. And there's another link. He has a lot of links in here. Remember, I told you, you could take a couple months and just absorb, absorb, absorb what's happening in this site. So point Loma Nazarene University in San Diego, California was originally, now get this, you just you brace yourself, the headquarters for the Theosophical Society and is the alma mater of, no, more evil, of James and Shirley Dobson. Ugh. This, when I release this video, this is what my husband is going to be filling you in on as we weave all of these loose ends of heretical various strings together into one. And you'll really enjoy that, I think. And it's nice to hear somebody else's uh, verbalization of something. Sometimes I like to hear, you know, the different flavors of what's out there on a particular topic coming from different. Uh, I'm going to say teachers, but I don't mean it like anything big. Okay, so see, focus on the family ties to the Theosophical Society. Oh, we will eventually. The Theosophical Society was founded in 1885 by the wonderful Christian woman. Oh, wait, no, not that, not that. By Madame Helena P. Blavatsky. Was she Jewish? I don't know. I think so to promulgate, oh, I love words, and I love that word, promulgate, the secret doctrine that, how am I not going to highlight this whole thing? I mean, seriously, come on now. This is amazing. The secret doctrine that a hidden spiritual hierarchy of, quote, ascended masters of the ancient wisdom who are advanced Spiritual beings are guiding the evolution of humanity towards <laughs> perfection and immortality. And then connect that, your, the spirit guides who are the deceiving demons, lying spirits that your apostle Paul told Timothy as well as us would be the name of the game, that people would not hold a sound doctrine, but they would gather together people that would, you know, uh, teach for them their own, you know, appetites of their own desires. They would have itching ears and they would, they would uh, turn away from the truth unto fables. Bing, 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 bing. And there you go. And so I would tell you too, that when you have the Paula Whites and when you have the uh, Robert Hendersons, and I'm sure there are others, really, honestly, that all, they're all going to heaven, don't you know? The uh, Anna, oh, I can't remember her last name now. I've done so many videos on these people. 
Bethel Church saying, oh, we just go hang out in heaven all the time. We just go take take our trip to heaven. I would tell you. And um, uh, also Spencer Smith's channel. I like him. Spencer Smith. He says that it sounds like what they're doing is actually this forbidden spiritual practice that you're not allowed to do. It's very dangerous. And that it's astral projection. And so who is to say that the information that they are getting is coming from the Lord when in fact it is coming from Lucifer? And think of how within the government structure of that woman riding the beast that 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 is in, in this case, literally one single woman riding the beast in our government, although it pans out to a great apostasy and rebellion in the name of Christ, in the name of his church, which is this plastic church. But when you consider how they're even showcasing this for you, monkey see, monkey do, capitulation, make her the head over the president for the spiritual um, outworking of NAR in the White House, you are being deceived even in that model of the reversal of the woman as the head and then the president under her, which is weird because he's taking dictation from her. And she's the one, don't forget, who says she is the one that got him saved. Even though Donald Trump says that he's never repented, he tries not to sin. And in addition to that, if you do your research, you find out that Norman Vincent Peale, who is a plastic Christian with the occultic flavoring, he also was Trump's pastor for many years. And he got his information from another woman who actually wrote a book called The Game of Life. So not just as a saying, but that's an actual book. And it, it, it has these occultic practices. And Rick Warren uh, took all of that stuff and made it palatable and super marketable to the globe and then taught churches how to think like businesses. And taught churches how to bring the unchurched, the unsaved into the church for the mega church phenomenon. And then you can easily infect and infuse poison, lies, deceit, deception, occultism, the shack book, and everything else into the churches and hit more people. And so that's how that all works. Okay. I'm just kind of trying to see what I can skim through here. So at this year's event, Rick Holland, John MacArthur, and Austin Duncan uh, attended and preached. So they were there. Uh, GCC, so his church, also invited several other churches in various states. The camp was five days of activities, small groups, dozens of games known a well-known Christian rapper who Austin and Rick taking the stage and rapping more games, some starting as late as 10 p.m. That's a little weird. These games are continuous the whole conference, and I've been told that one game, yeah, involved teams trying to avoid touching a pig head. <laughs> what? Well, that's why I started with the pictures first. So, you know, get that shock in nice and early, and then... It's not such a big deal when we read about it later. You're welcome. <laughs> we attended a carnival at GCC last night and an unbelievable event, 20 plus activities. And I, I love that they put, you know, the little quotes around that, including bowling, face painting, judging from the carnival activities. I would say that GCC needs no help planning these pagan activities. <laughs> and I kept noticing one child after another being paraded up to pose for a picture after the wicked adults painted their faces. So, pagan activities, face painting, pig heads, pig sets. The major festivals of the pagan world are Samhain in the October 30th through 31st. I do not know that in bulk at all, the February 1st through the 2nd. And a call for an uprising taught us all about Beltane, which is your spring April 30th to May 1st. And then I don't know this one. And I don't know how to pronounce it. And I'm not going to hurt myself trying. That is in the summer. That starts with an L. So during these celebrations, pagans honor their false gods. 
evidently by painting their faces and bodies and then participating in, quote, warrior games. Mm -hmm. Weird sex. <laughs> and even animal and human sacrifices. So you've heard of this, you know, the druids, the pagans, the earth worshipers. They like to get the attention of daddy Satan by hurting someone or something. And uh, that's how that works in that economy of the kingdom of darkness, for which we are just passing through. As previously stated, psychotic John MacArthur's Regeneration Youth Camp is traditionally held at the end of July and coincides with the dates of the, what? Celtic Druid Festival of the thing I'm not going to try to pronounce. Lubnash blah, blah. The 2010 camp and conference was held, and it gives the dates. So, right overlapping, right? Like, that's, that's just coincidence. One, two days out of, how many days was it? One day. One day. One, one out of 365 days. Huh. That is quite the quinky dink, wouldn't you say? Okay, let's keep going. Since the early times, carnivals have been accompanied by parades, masquerades, pageants, and other forms of revelry that have their origins in pre-Christian pagan rites, especially fertility rites that were connected with the upcoming of spring and the rebirth of vegetation. And the article there for that link is Pagan Revelry, the Days Are Evil. Now, according to the Fellowship of Isis, who that stems back to Egypt then, this event is also the Celtic Druid Festival of Regeneration. I will see if I can find a pronunciation tool. And if I can't, well, then we'll just live. Okay. Hmm. So, you know, the, the big problem with this is that it is thanking the earth Which is Romans 1 all over again. Here we go. Lou now sad. That was never going to happen. Lou now sad. <laughs> Lou now sad. Okay. No, we got it. So <clears throat> I'm going to skip <laughs> uh, a little bit here and I will put, <laughs> I'm sorry, a link in so that you can go over this more thoroughly if you want. But basically, at the end of the day, it is Mother Worth, Earth worship, and it goes back to the idea of Lucifer. And it goes back to the idea of the giants on the Earth, which I'm totally into. To a point, uh, the Nephilim were the sons of God who were in Genesis that interbred with humanity. Job 38, before there was a human, there were the sons of God. And they had relations with women. So evil angels plus evil humans made evil giants. And they were called the Watchers in the Book of Enoch, which I don't hate the Book of Enoch. I really don't. I, I would love to see a copy of it in the Bible. And if you just are so traumatized by it, it's not canon, it's not canon. Oh, oh Okay then put the title of, of historical on it and at least consider it and then keep the canon the canon. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, <clears throat> that is how I would do that. And I actually don't have a copy here, but you can read it online if you want to. And I find it to be very reverent to the Lord. I, I, I tend to wonder, as others have, if it is supposed to be in the canon. But I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not a big thing for me that, you know, some people live and die by that and have strong opinions. And I think it just makes the Bible, the rest of the Bible make more sense. But there are some people that are like, no, it's not part of the 66. I don't want anything to do with it. That's fine. You know, do what you got to do. So they go into a lot of information to help you establish dates, times. And this is pretty interesting. Uh, it talks about a mighty warrior and this Celtic god of war, false, false gods. A giant like Nimrod, the mighty hunter of men who defied God. I mean, you kind of have to beg the question, where did these giants come from? That's just normal in the genome? I don't think so. So this uh, regeneration 
festival was also called these other names. And <clears throat> according to the article, it means Feast of First Fruits, which is your, your resurrection uh, Sunday, the first day of the week that Christ rose from the dead, quite interestingly. And so in order to Christianize its forbidden customs and dissociate it from the Druid god, I don't know, however you pronounce that, Lug or whatever. In some English-speaking countries in the Northern Hemisphere, then they give the dates on that. There's a festival involving the wheat crop. Uh, let's see here. So there was a funeral that was for the human victims who were sacrificed. Oh, interesting. Okay. And that's why they did the ancient warrior festival funeral games. Okay. Okay. Tied together. Alleged to have been held in honor of this, <clears throat> this lug deity's deceased foster mother, Talti. It is more probable that the funeral was for the human victims who were sac sacrificed. Makes sense. And then they get some information that they've drawn out from <coughs> the uh, National Geographic. Just skimming this really quick here. And um, yeah, the demonic, evil, false gods, they loved them some slaughter. Yeah. Oh, wow. And apparently they would even uh, bring the innocent into this and not just prisoners. That's disgusting. So that was your uh, European Romans and Julius Caesar. Okay. Oh, after 20 years, 20, what, 20, over 20 years after Christ. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. That's BC. Sorry. Don't worry about that, Mom. Last Okay, <clears throat> so this is obviously what uh, MacArthur and friends are doing as the Lucinaciferians. Warrior magic, okay, ritual magic, yes. Initiation rites, chanting, dancing in circles incited the warriors into a frenzy, creating altered states of consciousness. Anybody say Bethel? Can anybody say Hillsong? And a group, a group mind, which lowered the inhibitions regarding the taking of human life. It also gets everybody on the same brainwaves and the same, the same uh, worldview when you sing and when you dance and all this stuff. We're very symbiotic. <clears throat> so warrior magic, male energies. The warrior here is a psychic warrior. His weapons are his body, mind, and spirit. Creepidocious. They must be trained to work in harmony. The warrior faces his own fears, develops his spiritual courage, and hones his will. Okay. Weird. Right? So what seems all innocent, albeit weird, um, happening at this church really is borrowing from Masonic druidian roots really the deities and then it gives the names the mother of the false gods and men the patron of scholars craftsmen warriors and magicians um yeah it's all surrounding this issue of light Young warrior and champion gods, thunder god, bringer of storms, lightning god, supreme <clears throat> craftsman of all crafts. So that, that's the Wicca right there. That's earth worship right there. Uh, the solar god of the Celts. Oh, and the origin of the name Lucifer, the light bringer, this, uh, this lug. I want to look that up really quick. We're so going to have to do a part two pretty soon here, I think. Mm -hmm. Irish mythology. Okay.
you could see, you know, the whole sun worship, earth worship thing. That all totally makes sense. Loki, look at that. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, the horned god. Okay, sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> Look at that. That might be the person's last name. Actually, not I think of it, but um, yeah, I mean, it's all the same theme. Lucifer, Masons, hidden knowledge, Gnosticism, Kabbalah. It all, it all goes together. Really? Yikes. Okay. Hmm. Oh, uh-huh. Cernunos. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to resist going to that. A light, right, sun god, god of war, many skilled fair one, hero, fake god, war, war magic, initiation. Okay, initiation. Hello, masonry, sorceries, <clears throat> or sorcerers, healing, revenge, manual arts, journey. I'm not reading that in order. Musicians, I mean, all of these things. Reincarnation, lightning. He was a carpenter, mason, etc., etc., druid. He just did a little bit of everything. The warrior theme is apparent in John MacArthur's regeneration camp. It's seen in numerous photos below with showing many campers with the painted faces and bodies participating in games that are traditionally held during this festival that we just learned about. And so here are the campers and the counselors emulating the Celtic spirit warrior or warrior spirit, same thing, war paint and the war cry. And I remind you, what does this have to do with the cross of Jesus Christ and getting born again? And these are children, so they're not going to know what end is up. They're going to trust the, the adults in their charge, and they're going to go with the flow. And the parents aren't here. See? Yeah, that's not normal. That's not pretty either. That's really weird. Right, this was a warrior culture, these ancient Celts. It was a civilization of aristocratic warrior tribes <clears throat> from the 6th century, and they're described as, quote, barbarians living inland from the Mediterranean Sea. Mm hmm. The attacks on the battlefield were fearless, wild, and savage, and they were also skilled and deadly. It was a warrior cult uh, 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 culture. Fighters were admired like heroes, etc. Oh, gross. Lopping off some heads. Hey, do we know another group of people who will be lopping off some people's heads in the days to come? Hmm. Hmm. Who could that be? Let me see. Why would you have a church full of youth participating in things that have that flavor of lopping people's heads off? Why would you do that? Oh, that's right. To get them ready for the ecumenical one world religion with a hidden hand back here. <clears throat> yeah, that makes perfect sense now. What was obscure and strange and odd has just been pulled right straight into focus with excellent journalism, I'm going to call it. And following right along with the goal and outcome of a particular group of people, this is soldier training for your children. One of the main motivators our motivations of the Celtic warrior was the pursuit of glory. And to this end, the Celts loved exhibition when in bat, uh, battle. They painted themselves with various materials. 
blue dye war cries in order to intimidate. Yes, Cora. In order to intimidate. Yeah, they know. I already told them. I told them you've been watching the Ten Commandments cartoon form. We've been we've been getting. I don't know how to say pronounce that. I'm only in third grade and I made the hack. Oh, by the way, if you could subscribe to my birthday because I'm turning nine in March fourth. She is turning nine. Nine days or Mm -hmm. eight or seven. Don't really know. Okay, thank you. In order to intimidate their enemies, Celtic warriors would also wear horned horn helmets or helmets. Gross. Topped with horse tails into battle to intimidate their enemies and make them appear taller. Okay, then. Yeah, that's totally not weird. Face and body painting. Again, remember, this is a Christian camp for children to learn about Jesus. Okay, so then they go into talking about the face and the body painting. And in a commentary on Leviticus 19.28, Adam Clark noted the striking parallel between the marks on the body, which were the customs and ancient pagan idolatry and the mark of the beast that will one day be mandatory during the tribulation. And if you can kind of consider thinking like training your mind for going there, the Bible says don't make any kind of cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Notice that for part. Don't do this for them, nor print any marks on you. I am the Lord your God, right? So this has to do with ownership, motivation, for why you do what you do, honoring of false deities, you know, all the kinds of things that take people to hell. And then he says here, it was a very ancient, very general custom to carry marks in the body in honor of the object of their worship. So we're talking things that violate the first, second, third, and I guess you could probably make a case for the fourth command, really, when you take it all into consideration, since Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath and our Sabbath rest. Eternal life is your Sabbath rest for eternity. No more having to go under the weight and the work and the hell that sin is. Most of the barbarous nations lately dis- discovered discovered have their faces, arms, and other junk, as well as other body parts, curiously carved or tattooed, probably for superstitious purposes. And the ancient writers abound with accounts of marks made on the face, arms, etc., in honor of different idols. So, again, the issue being false gods. And to this inspired penman alludes, and then a whole host of various scriptures where false worshipers are represented as having received in their hands and their foreheads the mark of the beast. Now, obviously, he's not saying this is the mark of the beast, but this is training. This is getting people ready for it. And again, these this is at a Christian camp, a Christian summer camp. So you shall not print any marks on you. And is that not like the whole Joker thing? Green hair, black eyes, red lips. That's that's the Joker thing, right? Like what spirit or attitude or feel about that has to do with Christ? Nothing. That is just weird. And that is very interesting that they they show the uh, Gaga applause album. Interspersed among the re- regeneration camp in the forest home camp photos are pictures and information from pagan sources which expose the pagan origins of the customs. Regeneration and forest home campers may not realize it, but quote, they are learning, this is very, very good, the way of the heathen which God has forbidden his people to do, saying, don't do that. The customs of the people are vain, vain. And they're altogether brutish and foolish, a doctrine of vanities. Jeremiah 10. Forest home summer camp promo. Again, what does this have to do with Jesus? And it's as a solstice at Stonehenge. So you can make stencils to use 
when body painting using the symbols that represent your particular religion or totem animal. Or you can use Celtic knotwork. It's just common. Face painting is always fun for everybody, especially the kids. Okay. And I yes, think there's... there's... Be a dead pig head in every culture family. <laughs> oh, my God. My husband knows what we're that talking about. my dad. They know. The family is four, and sometimes my dad is two. Okay, so, right. And, you know, when you start to think about the idea of the mask, the masked person, the hidden motives, the evil... Uh, you know, you could do a whole study on the Joker and the Jester and the the, the Muse and the, you know, Roman uh, theater and and uh, th there's a whole thing there, hidden motive, uh, serpent tongue, uh, much more can be said. And so there are other representations and the celebrating of the fruits of the first harvest. Again, is this is this a pagan church? Because if it was a pagan church, this was totally makes sense. Then it's supposed to be about Jesus. Celtic tradition uh, has them painting their bodies with whatever ward is. I don't know what that is. To present a threatening appearance to their enemies. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Ward is a yellow flower plant, and it gives a blue color, much like the blue jeans of today. And you can make stencils to use blah, blah, blah. We already read that. So paint your face to look like your totem or to look threatening, much like the warriors yeah, did in go, their time. Go to that, take her to that Grace to You website where they're showing the kids all dressed up in the Celtic war paint. At Grace to You? And they're sticking their thumbs out and they're going, hey. Is it at Grace to You, though? Because I'm at watchunterprayer.org. Um, I, I don't know. Google the... Well, I'm at the site that has all the pictures, so this, this is good enough. Uh, but thank you. So painted ones in Latin, painting or tattooing their bodies. And that was something that Julia, Ju Julius Caesar was involved in. It also has to do with the theme of, you know, group think, everybody on the same page through the, the visuals. So Stonehenge and church. <laughs> And there's the summer camp promo. And I wouldn't be having them put anything over my kid's eye. Six-pointed star on forehead and illuminated eye. And the third angel followed. Right. This is the receiving of the mark in the forehead scripture, which John MacArthur says you can take and totally get away with it. Uh, you should, with dead pig heads. And dead pig heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta do that. So you forehead or hand. Shh. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Be mad. And you shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Contradicting God's word, MacArthur teaches those who take the mark of the beast can still be redeemed. <laughs> so we've talked about that. And then they also get into more... Um, weird stuff well do join me for part two because well this is a long article and there's a lot more to it but this is what is happening in churches and it is happening from your good friends the lucimaciferians and one particular nation in unbelief not talking about the ones in christ talking about the ones who aren't and they have a determined you know goal from long ago to crush the church and to change it from within and so this is a wonderful article. I hope that you have learned a lot from this. And I hope that you have learned to stop trusting everybody. You shouldn't just lend your trust out because somebody says this is a church or we're related to the church or we love the church or whatever. They are lying to you.